Now, earlier today, not everyone on stage was out to get Donald Trump. Our friend and colleague, the anchor of the uh, Faulkner Focus, Harris Faulkner, she raised several very fair, very important issues. Take a look. I want to talk about something that bursts, and this is the weight of the inflation on this country right now. Much of that falls on the, the shoulders of single moms, single black moms, when you look statistically. Yeah. How do you turn it around? What's your plan for the black community when it comes to money? The inflation is absolutely destroying our middle class, uh, our working class, virtually every class. Inflation is a disaster in our country. Inflation is a country buster. It breaks every country, and we had in my opinion, the worst inflation we've had. They say it's 58 years, but I think it's much more than that. People can't buy houses. They no longer have the American dream. Young people, young black people, they don't have the American dream anymore. They can't buy a house. They can't borrow the money because of the cost of the money. They can't buy it because of the cost of housing, because of the cost to build it, because of inflation. Inflation is a disaster, and it's destroying our country. All right, joining us now with more, the anchor of the Faulkner Focus, our friend Harris Faulkner, also the host of Outnumbered. Uh, great to see you, Harris. So it was great to see you up there, too. I was glad you had the Good opportunity. Um, tell us from your perspective, because it seemed hostile, but on the other, uh, on the other hand, maybe I, I didn't hear the crowd right, and you can t bring us in the room. Um, I heard a lot of people cheering for Donald Trump. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. I mean, there were people who were, you know, he's funny. So there were people who were listening closely enough to catch some of his humor and to laugh at that. There were a couple of times when people didn't like what he said. But at one point when he was talking about inflation and how he would try to turn things around with drill, baby, drill and energy and really going after um, that sector and making things cheaper in that sector, we're in heat waves, we're in coal spells, we're in all those things. Um, making living, you know, cheaper to do uh, with quality reserved. When he was going into all of that, apparently somebody in the front row, I couldn't see this woman, but apparently she was smiling, waving, doing something. He said, oh, okay, so you know what I'm talking about. You like what I'm saying. So, you know, there are some universals out there that we as human beings go to uh, when we talk about the economy. I, I thought two things about today. I, I don't like it particularly when you're driven solely by emotion. So by getting the conversation tipped off, by, by making it so emotional and so personal with one journalist and one interviewee, um, ABC News reporter versus Donald Trump, what happens there is that you keep the issues out. And people aren't going to vote on whether or not those two like each other on stage. What people are going to vote on is, well, did he say anything? Did he leave something out that I need in my life? Help me choose. I have now, well, this day is over, Sean, so now we got 96 days left. How do I make a choice this November having the potential Democratic candidate just dumped in the lap of, of voters and compare them to the man who has now gone to a place that was pretty hostile? I mean, they were expecting a lot of protesters. You had some hostility behind the scenes at the National Association of Black Journalists as there was pressure on the NABJ not to host Donald Trump. They wanted them to rescind some of those journalists, rescind the invitation to the president. Um, so there were things you saw one of the co-chairs of this huge annual event uh, bow out yesterday, just quit, saying, well, for several reasons. Axios reporting it was internal and external pressure on her for having been part of an apparatus that booked Donald Trump as the featured speaker today at this big conference of, of black journalists. But I saw some opportunities to really press in. I wanted to know about Senator J.D. Vance. Sean, you and I have both covered this. I watch your show. You've pressed the president. Why did you choose him? He's had some stumbles. Is he really ready for day one? Um, and there were times when audio was really a problem. I mean, they had tech issues at NABJ that we could have even helped them with and would have been happy to. Um, they chose a different route, and it was pretty bad in there. Like, we couldn't always hear each other. But... I do think that that point got across. I repeated myself a couple of times. I think people do have that question. We've covered it enough to know. Why him? What's your plan moving forward with your VP pick? He told me, Sean, on the very day that he was shot four hours after I sat with him at Mar-a-Lago in an assassination attempt on his life. And I, told, I said this to the audience today. I said, you told me 
that picking a VP was important because now you realize bad things can happen. He said it twice. Four hours later, a bad thing, a really bad thing happened. So is this the guy that you have faith in? And if you do, talk about him. He did a bit, but I, I think it bears saying Kamala Harris is going to make her VP pick. Are you ready for that? Is this guy ready? So I had some substantive questions that I did get to, but when you go down an emotional road or a gotcha moment, uh, it makes it difficult. And I worked yeah. my best as a journalist to get us back on track to having a real, what we promised the audience, a real conversation. I love the fact that some of those very journalists, Sean, who criticized the situation with inviting Trump, sat there and listened and participated, more than 1,100 of them. And then you had rows and rows and rows of global, American, national, local media taking it in. I mean, I think that's where we should be. I don't want to know journalists as activists. That was actually a real bright side in this. I, I think at the end of the day, I, I don't like identity politics, uh, my Christian faith. I know you, we share the same faith. Um, I don't like demographic mm -hmm. breakdowns. The bottom line to me is, are you more safe and more secure in your town and in your city? Are the borders more, more secure? Yep. Um, is the economy, how's that working out for you and your family? How are you doing economically? How's your educational system, mm -hmm. which is the ladder to success in this country? How are we right. on the world stage? What is our role in the world stage? But uh, Harris, we were really proud of you. I thought you did an amazing job today. It was great to see you up there. Oh, uh, thank you. And you make us proud every day. Thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.